We've all dreamt of beating the odds and winning it big, and the stories on this list make the high rollers table in Vegas look like a high school poker night. It's the seven most insane gambles that actually paid off. In 490 BC, the Persians were the greatest empire the world had ever seen. It stretched from the Balkans in Eastern Europe all the way to the Indus Valley in modern-day Pakistan and Northern India. They had conquered multiple kingdoms when they turned their attention to the Greek city-states. The Athenians were nearly alone in resisting the Persians, many of their allies too intimidated by the powerful invaders. The Athenians stood against an army more than three times their size at the Battle of Marathon. King Miltiades knew they were no match in a straight-up battle, so he threw some curveballs. First, he attacked at dawn, his infantry sprinting across the mile-wide divide between the two armies. This confused the Persians. Why a suicide mission to begin a battle? Miltiades' second and greatest gamble was weakening his forces in the center and strengthening the wings, hoping the Persians would overextend themselves in the middle. The gamble paid off. The Persians were collapsed by the Athenian flanks and forced to retreat. The battle is immortalized by the soldier who sprinted the 26 miles to bring news of the victory to Athens, originating the modern-day marathon. The Battle of Gaugamela in 331 BCE should be called the Thrilla in Gaugamela, because just like in the famous boxing rivalry between Ali and Frazier, this was the third time Alexander the Great and Darius, King of the Persians, would face each other in battle for the heavyweight belt of ruling Asia. The gamble was Alexander's. He went all in with an inferior hand of a much smaller army and a battlefield that favored Darius's chariots and war elephants. However, he had the upper hand when it came to strategy. He personally led a risky maneuver with his cavalry. He advanced toward the Persian flank at a wide angle, drawing the larger opposing cavalry away from their infantry in the middle. This created a large gap, so when Alexander abruptly changed course and charged into it, they became a galloping wedge of destruction that sent shocked Persians scattering and caused Darius himself to flee the battlefield. In short, Darius folded and Alexander took the pot. Great gambles aren't exclusively for underdogs. As we've already learned, those who reach the mountaintop have often taken the greatest risks. This was the case with Julius Caesar in 52 BCE. The previously conquered Gallic tribes had united to revolt against Rome, and their army gathered at the heavily fortified town of Elysia, in the modern-day Burgundy region of France. Caesar knew a direct attack would fail, so he laid siege on the town, gambling that the much larger Gallic army of 80,000 men plus the townspeople would quickly starve. He encircled the town in 11 miles of 12-foot walls, trenches, and booby traps. When Gallic reinforcements came, he built 13 miles of barriers to keep them out. They fought off several attacks for a month until the starving Gauls realized they couldn't break through the defenses and surrendered. The revolt subdued and Caesar's risky gamble paid off. A wise man once said, sometimes you gotta go back to move forward. Julius Caesar proved this theory with the greatest gamble of his life, crossing the Rubicon River. In 50 BCE, Caesar was a Roman consul and had been leading his legions throughout Gaul, modern-day France, for five years, conquering huge amounts of land and people. However, he did all of this without the support of the Senate back in Rome. He was ordered to disband his army and return to Rome, where he would be put on trial for treason and war crimes due to his unsanctioned invasions. He had a choice to make, follow the order, which was essentially suicide, or return to Rome with his army, which would set off a civil war. He knew his legend was popular with the Roman citizens and was confident his loyal soldiers could defeat the opposition. So on January 10, 49 BCE, he crossed the Rubicon River in northern Italy, declaring war on the Roman Republic. He was ultimately victorious and became Rome's first dictator, forever transforming Rome from a republic to an empire. For a coalition of European countries in 1704, their gamble wasn't just go big or go home, it was go big or get steamrolled by the French. The French seemed invincible on the battlefield and were threatening to capture Vienna to control all of Europe. 
England, Holland, and Prussia formed the Grand Alliance with some smaller German states determined to not let this happen. The Duke of Marlborough knew the situation was dire. He marched his army 250 miles across Europe, deceiving allies and enemies about his destination in order to take the French by surprise. He succeeded, winning the Battle of Blenheim. The victory saved Vienna from French control and removed Bavaria from the war. The Duke of Marlborough's descendant, Winston Churchill, said of the victory, it changed the political axis of the world. Poker players will be the first to tell you that gambling isn't just blind luck. Sometimes you gotta bluff. That is how a crazy idea like Operation Mincemeat in World War II became a turning point in the war. In 1943, Germany and the Axis powers controlled great stretches of Europe. In a huge gamble, two British intelligence officers took the body of a deceased homeless man and spent months creating an elaborate backstory for him as an officer in the British Royal Marines. The British Navy then dumped the body of Major William Martin off the coast of Spain with a briefcase full of fake military documents chained to his wrist. Spain was riddled with Nazi spies who discovered it, and, as was communicated to Winston Churchill, mincemeat was swallowed rod, line, and sinker. Hitler himself saw photos of the documents and ordered 90,000 troops to be moved to Greece. The plan had worked, and the Allies invaded the Italian island of Sicily with minimal casualties, turning the fate of the war. If Operation Mincemeat sounds like it's out of a movie, you're not far off. The idea came in part from British Lieutenant Commander Ian Fleming, who would go on to write the James Bond novels. Margaret Thatcher's moniker, the Iron Lady, was getting pretty rusty only three years into her first term as Britain's first female prime minister. Citizens didn't like her domestic policies and the country was in a general decline. She faced being voted out early. Then, in April 1982, Argentina invaded the British-controlled Falkland Islands, claiming the islands as their territory. Members of her cabinet were against reclaiming control. British allies refused to get involved, and the country's navy wasn't well equipped to enter a war 8,000 miles away off the southern tip of South America. But Thatcher was determined to free the island's 1,800 inhabitants from the invaders. The Royal Military won a decisive victory in just 74 days. Back in England, everyone was thrilled and felt a renewed sense of pride in the country. Thatcher would become the longest tenured PM of the 20th century. So many heart-pounding risks, so little time. These stories of incredible gambles leave us inspired and sweating through our shirts. Think we missed any insane gambles? Let us know in the comments below. Until next time, good luck.